everybody it's Michelle and I am super excited about the product that I've got to show you guys today I have been wanting this for so long and Arteza has come out with alcohol markers I just love these they're called the Arteza Everblend art markers they come in this wonderful case that I'm going to show you a little bit more about. There are 60 in the set, and last I checked their website, this was all that was available was just the complete set and the travel case, which is wonderful. I don't want to ever live without this travel case. They have them also available with empty slots that you can put some of your existing markers and pencils and things like that in, and I want to get some of those as well. So I'll not only leave a link for you guys for this set, but one of the travel cases as well. And don't forget, I am able to put U.S. and U.K. links now. So you'll be able to get those in the U.S. and the U.K. as well. These have a chisel tip on one end and a fine tip on the other. And generally, when you think of alcohol markers, you think of the brush tips. I thought that was going to be a drawback when I first got them, but I didn't find it to be a problem at all. I love these tips. Even with a fine tip, the color still blends smoothly on the paper. It's wonderful. It does say replaceable tips, and I have asked Arteza about this, and they're trying to find me some more information on that, so I don't know as yet if the replacement tips are available but they will be in the future and when they are i'll be sure to let you guys know i also asked them if there would be a brush tip available in the replacements when those are available and they don't know on that yet either so i'm waiting for some information back on them but i will be sure to let you guys know because i'm telling you now i love these markers and this is not the last time you're going to see them on my channel I just love them. Okay, so I'm going to take that off. And it tells you on here a little bit about them. That they are blendable, alcohol-based markers with replaceable tips. And we've yet to find out about that. But I will give you guys the links to those when they are available. Non-toxic. The marker case has 72 elastic slots. Now, the one that is just the empty case that you'll find online might be for smaller markers. I'm not sure. I think it has like 108 slots or something like that. But just be sure to check that on the website when you follow that link. It fits 15 to 22 millimeter markers. has the carrying handle and the adjustable shoulder strap and a zipper pocket. And I want to show you guys all about the case first because it is wonderful. So you've got this strap here that comes with it, and I've got it shortened just to fit into the camera, but you can see that is, well, maybe you can see if I would get in camera. That does slide and make that adjustable so you can lengthen it, and then it's got the pad here for the shoulder part, which makes it very comfortable, or if you don't want to use the shoulder strap, there is the little carrying handle, and I like that as well. On the back here is the zipper pocket. It's a very flat pocket, but maybe some little card bases or coloring panels with some stamped images that you're carrying with you on the go would easily fit down in there and be able to work on some projects. And then we've got some cards here. And as I take these off of my packaging, I'm going to keep these in my pocket here because this tells you all of the colors that are available in the set. And I think there are actually some very good skin tones and things available in here. I really like the variety of colors in these. And I'm going to make sure to hold on to my cards there so I can reference back to those if I need to. And now for opening the case you can see here it has these two clips and then in addition to clipping it does velcro shut as well and it's strong velcro and then you've got the tops of your markers all show in there 
with the color names and you can see everything and just open it up and use it like this as sort of a tote style and I like that but if you want to lay it out flat the sides over here do open up as well and that will lay flat and then this flips sort of like a page and that center piece that has these two folding pages I guess you would say that comes loose as well so how handy is this you guys I think just the case alone is very impressive and the alcohol markers are amazing and this includes 60 markers so you have 59 colors and also a colorless blender and that is number a0 the blender and we'll get into that a little bit too and then on top of your 60 markers all organized in your neat little elastic slots in the back you've got room for 12 more so i think that's amazing and i just love this set so I'm going to move that up a little bit and I'm going to bring in a sheet of cardstock that I've got and I've stamped some hearts and you guys have seen me test out markers like this before once very recently and I just think this heart image is a very open image with plenty of blending area and it's good for demonstration purposes on trying out these markers. And I'm going to put a few sheets of printer paper behind my cardstock piece because usually alcohol markers do bleed through the paper. That's just kind of a property of the alcohol ink. Usually we use these on things that are going to be cut out and then placed as a layer on the card rather than one layer cards. Okay, so we'll try some reds. And one color combination here that I have already tried out and I just love is the wine red, ruby red, and rose red. And you can see that's sort of a dark, medium, and light. And usually with alcohol marker coloring, you kind of do three tones like that, or three shades, I should say. So I'm just going to show kind of how the tips do. And there's the chisel tip from the wide side and then the narrow side. And then the bullet tip. And you can make a very narrow line. And the bullet tip, I just really want more markers with a bullet tip. I do like the brush tips, but if I had my choice, I would have a brush and a bullet rather than a chisel and a bullet. And even Copic markers have a brush and a chisel. So if we could find a bullet and a brush, I think that would be ideal. Okay, so there's kind of the width of the nibs. You can see what they do there. And I'm going to go ahead and color one of these hearts. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you with the bullet tip how when you lay that color down with that narrow tip, you would think you get so much overlapping with that narrow tip that you're going to result in streaks, but that's not the case. It's not streaky at all. The color just blends with itself so smoothly and perfectly. Actually, that top corner does look a little blurry, but I'll go ahead and take this over another one because I think there may have been something on my paper. I really want you guys to see that it is perfect blending. You can see there how well that blends. And if you want to color larger areas in more quickly, then you have the option of the chisel tip 
and you can see that that just lays it down in no time and fills that entire area. So that was our lightest color, rose red. And now I'm going to come in with my medium color, which is ruby red. And I also like that they show you here on the marker which end is the bullet tip and which end is the chisel tip. So I'm going to take my medium red. And another tip for alcohol markers is to work from light, medium, dark, medium, light. That really helps with blending. If you have that lighter color down first, it's going to help your medium color blend into that as it's applied. Same with the darker over the medium. And then as you come back, what didn't blend in the first time is easier to go over with the second one. So there is our darkest red. And you guys can see that's pretty good and blendy already. But I'm going to come back over again with my medium tone and just blend the edge where those two meet. And it just blends so smoothly. And now back to our light. And we blend that in to where it meets with the medium. And look what a wonderfully smooth blend you've got there. Okay, and now a little bit for our colorless blender. I wanted to show you guys. Okay, here you can see that I've gotten outside the line a little bit. So I can take my chisel tip on my colorless blender and just kind of push. Because you're not going to erase the color, but you can move it around. So if you just kind of move it back into your stamp image, sometimes you can get that on there. It's a little more difficult with red. But here is another thing that I really love about the fine bullet tip. And that is using your colorless blender to make patterns and designs within your colored areas. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Over here on my lighter side, we're just going to make a little highlighted area. And that just moves that ink away from that area. And I'm going to also use it to make a polka dot pattern and show you guys. Just kind of letting it stay there. And push that ink away. And just take a few seconds for each dot. So isn't that cute, you guys? I just love that. So I'm going to wipe off the tip of my marker to get that red off. And then we will try a couple more colors. And I think I want to try to blend some pinks and purples. So we'll just test it out a little bit here on the paper above. Lay our pink down. And you can see no streaks. I love that it just blends into its own self, first of all. And then into each other. So you can get some transitional colors or some light to dark gradients. So then come back over with my medium tone. And you can see that kind of pull that purple out into that. And darken up that next one. And then our pink again. And I'm going to try to do like a light to medium to dark gradient 
in my heart. And again, when you're coloring the image, you're going to get a little better than we did here because we were just putting the colors next to each other and blending where they meet. But when you're coloring your images, you want to go over the whole thing with your lightest color. It's sort of like a wet on wet technique when you're watercolor painting and you start with a wet paper. This is what our lightest color does here. It just sort of provides a wet surface that the next color can just kind of blend out into. And let's see, my light one was lilac. My medium is violet, and then my dark is royal purple. And actually for a medium color, that one's pretty dark. And then again with my lightest color. So those actually blended pretty well. I chose some colors that were pretty far apart. We'll try to pick some a little closer on our next one and see what we can get. I think I want to try some yellows. Some yellow into green maybe. Let's see. I'm going to kind of choose a color. This is Bumblebee Yellow. I like that. That's a nice muted sort of golden yellow. That would really be great for fall leaves and images like that. This is Tuscan Sun. And it is a little bit brighter. I like that. Sunflower yellow. That's sort of an orangey yellow. And actually, I think I'm going to do a heart with those three colors. That was a very good blending combo right there. Those go together so well. Okay, so we're going to start our lightest one is probably the Tuscan Sun. And I'm going to go ahead and use my chisel tip and color in my heart. Make sure that I'm in screen for you guys. I'm going to color the whole thing with Tuscan Sun. I love that. These are wonderful colors. They're very soft colors. And don't get me wrong, there are some vibrant ones in there, but I like that there's a more sophisticated sort of muted color palette here to choose from. These are wonderful. And again, there are brights. For example, here this uh, neon yellow. I have tried it and it looks just like like the traditional highlighter markers. It's very vibrant. So you've got quite a range to choose from. So next I'm going to do my bumblebee yellow which was just slightly darker. And when you're creating um, shadows and shading on some stamped images or even on some die cuts Colors that are very close in intensity like this are what you want to use because that's going to give a more natural shading kind of look. So now I'm coming in with my darkest, the sunflower yellow. And as you can see, those being so close, they're a very good blending combination. They're blending almost completely on their own without me having to do anything. But I am going to come back in reverse order. And this is my Bumblebee Yellow. And then just kind of smooth that transition where those two meet. Beautiful. I love this. I love this color combination. I'm going to use this combination of yellows a lot. So now I'm coming back with my Tuscan Sun and blending those. And look at that blend. You do have a little bit of a look of wetness kind of because of 
the alcohol ink being very wet as it goes on. But this will dry and smooth out even more. And I love that. I love that yellow. And you can even kind of push it around if you think you got too much dark and you wanted more of your heart to be a lighter color. And I just love that combination of those yellows. It's wonderful. And they blend together so smoothly. Okay, so I think maybe we will try some blues and greens. And I only have one heart left to color because I redid my red here. Okay, I'm going to try to do a blue into a green rather than... In the red, purple, and yellow, we've all done like all one... Like this one is all red, all purple, all yellow. I'm going to, instead of trying to do all blue, I'm going to try to transition it into a green and see if that's going to work for us. So for my middle color here, I chose one that's sort of a teal shade. It's actually called Pine Green, but it's very teal looking, very, very much on the blue side. And then we have a blue that will transition into that, coming out to a green on the other side. And that's another thing if you want to do two colors blending together. Choose a third color to go in between that has some combination of both of those in it. So with the blue and green, we've kind of got a teal here to blend the two together and make that transition. Um, if you wanted to do a yellow and a blue, you would use green in between because the yellow and the blue would make green naturally when they merge. So it makes for a wonderful transition color. I'm going to go ahead and color some of my heart up here blue on this corner. And again, very subtle color choices. Muted, nice color tone. What is this called? Carolina Blue. It has very much of a muted tone. I really, really like that. So now I'm going to come in with my teal color. That's sort of a blue-green combination color. And for now, I'm not worried about blending. I just want to lay these next to each other because we're going to a completely different color from blue over to green. I didn't take my first color over the entire thing as a sort of first wash to go on with that wet technique because I didn't want that blue to be under my green at the end result here. And actually, I think that teal is the darkest, but still, for it to fall in the middle is a good choice because it is that transitional color with both a little bit of blue and a little bit of green in it. And you can see that green blended into it very well. And we'll see now if we can get the blue to blend just as well. And I think that is a wonderful transition, you guys. Look at that. I hope it's coming in clear for you guys to see. I love that transition. That did wonderfully. Okay, so I've gotten all of the lines here again. That gives me another opportunity to try my colorless blender. You can see here it didn't work quite as well. It kind of feathered out and made it pink. But I did go in on that pretty much while all of my reds were still wet. So I'm going to fan this around a little bit and dry my blues and greens. And then once those are dry, they're a little easier to push back with your colorless blender. Okay. And as you guys can see, alcohol markers do bleed through. That's not a problem. That doesn't mean it's a bad marker. That's just alcohol ink and every alcohol marker I have ever seen does that, even Copics. I'm gonna take my little bullet tip and try to push back my little boo-boo there. I may not have allowed it to dry long enough, but you can see sort of that clear, wet look to the cardstock. And that is, you know, you, you have to realize that's in the ink too. So they'll get a little more of a dry look as they go along. And I think that is a beautiful, beautiful blend. And I think if we come back again, with our lavender. I think, even though they are very far apart here with the purples, I think we can get a better blend on that if we try. 
And was lavender even what I was using? I don't think so. I think I was using lilac. So I may have just messed it up myself. But you can see after that has dried a little bit when I'm coming in with that lighter tone over top of the medium one, it's lightening it up quite a bit. And I wish I hadn't grabbed the wrong color and made that looks like a little blue spot, but I think we could get that to transition very nicely, even when they're pretty far apart. And now for the last thing I want to test out, we've seen the reds, and as you guys know, some of my colors that I'm kind of picky about is red and black, and they're hard to get ones that are kind of true to color in paint, markers, or anything else that you're going for. So I'm going to try the black, and I'm going to try a couple of grays with that. So I've got koala gray and cloud gray or cloudy day. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my lightest gray. I'll go ahead and come over here to this side and we'll work there. And I'm going to go ahead and use my chisel tip here and get a large area as if we were coloring one of the hearts and wash the whole area with the lightest tone and then come in with the medium tone. And then the darker color, the black. And that's a very intense black. So even coloring over that wash of lighter gray still looks very intense over top of that. So then bring our medium and blend into that. And you can see it kind of pull some of that darker color into that one there. And again, black is very, very dark. So you do kind of see a little bit of that harsh line there. And then the grays transitioned very well. And another thing that I'm finding with these is they don't bleed too far beyond where you want to color. And you can actually layer over and over your colors quite a few times without too much bleeding. And it's definitely not destroying my paper. So I think this is awesome. I love these, you guys. You have got to get a set of these. Okay, so I'm going to try one more time now to do some of these patterns into our colored areas. And you see I did the polka dots before already on the red, but we can come back over again now that everything has dried and kind of brighten those up. And I'm going to use my chisel tip and we'll see if we can use like the very narrow edge of that and make like some stripes. This would probably be better if we didn't do a color blend there that I've gone crossways from the direction I did my color blending in. I'm going to get another color and see what we can do. So I can just apply that in a single color. And let's try an orange. We haven't done an orange yet. Just a wash of one color, which is probably what you would do if you were doing patterns with your colorless blender. And now I'm going to take my colorless blender and see if we can make a crosshatch pattern in that. And just use that colorless blender to push away the color and make lighter areas. doesn't completely remove your color you just get sort of a lighter tone where it's removed some of the ink and I think that's a really cool effect so you guys can see there it's creating that crosshatch pattern 
you can just kind of go over it a time or two and lighten it some or you can go over it several times and lighten it quite a bit I thought I was done but I'm gonna try one more thing we're gonna try a tip to tip technique and that is where you touch one marker to the other to pick up part of the color so I'm going to use my yellow here and see if I can pick up that teal color. So you can see what my yellow does on its own. And I'm going to touch that to my other marker and kind of pick up some of that darker color. It doesn't appear to be picking it up. Just the slightest amount. So not, not too good on the tip to tip, but I'm not too sad about that because they blend together so well anyway. And I think probably the biggest reason for that is because you need the brush tip to do tip to tip. It works really better with the brush tips. And hopefully they will have some brush tip options in the replacement tips. I really hope so. So those are the Arteza Everblend markers, and I am so happy with them, you guys. I just love these. I'm going to bring them in and show you guys again so you can get another look at the colors that are included. I think they are just amazing. I love these. I will leave the link below so you guys can check them out. It's an amazing deal. So you guys leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about them. Let me know if you decide to get a set for yourself. I don't think you'll regret it. These are wonderful markers. And again, I will let you guys know when Arteza lets me know about the replacement tips, when those become available, and whether or not we're going to be able to have a brush tip option. So all of the links, US and UK, will be included below. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a like over on my Facebook page. And be sure to join our Facebook group, Crafty Minds. Also follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. And don't forget to visit my blog. I'll have links to everything in the description below. So be sure and check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.